Hello everyone and welcome back to another book review. Today I am going to be reviewing Correspondence from the End of the Universe, Story and Art by Minoto. This is what the cover looks like. Unfortunately the library did place a sticker right over the main character's head on the cover, so I will show you what the main character of this story looks like just here on the beginning so that we can get a good look at him. So correspondence from the end of the universe. What drew me into this book was the cover. This is volume one in the series and I wanted to talk about the plot, what I like about this book and future plans for me and the series. So correspondence from the end of the universe opens with a young college graduate from Russia named Marco. Marco, we get the sense, doesn't have a lot of family left and he's graduated college and his only goal in life right now is to travel the world with his lover. The gender of the lover in question is left to be anonymous or at least I didn't see any indication of that whatsoever. And we, knew, we do not see the lover in the story. He's just making these plans and he wants to do this when his entire life gets turned upside down and he gets transported to the end of the universe in the sense that it's actually a management studio, a management office, because as Marco comes to find out in this rather sci-fi fantastical world, the universe is actually managed like a corporation and he has been randomly selected from his planet to do service for 10 years in the general running and continuation of the universe. This is a job that somebody has to do and everyone has to take a turn at doing this, or I should say someone from each planet has to take a turn at doing this job throughout time and space. And Marco just happens to be one of the people selected. Now Marco is from a planet that is like Earth today, has no contact with any sort of outside civilization, so he did not know there was any other planets, people, species, anything. He had no idea that sentient life resided outside the universe. In fact, like us today, he had no clue that science wasn't how things were being made in the sense that universes and galaxies and planets were actually being created in this end management office. So Marco is completely out of his depth and he's horrified by the fact that he's going to be required to spend 10 years in service to this corporation managing the universe when he's supposed to be traveling the world with his lover back in Russia. Well, not just Russia, the world, but he's trying to get back to Russia to present time to travel the world and do what he wants to do with his life. But the universe that he's come into, or the universe he was already in as Earth, but he's now been exposed to, is quite unique. The author takes a lot of time going through different people who live there, different, I guess, I don't know if species is the right word, but different people who live in these different planets that Marco has never been exposed to. So Marco is kind of torn between it's vaguely intriguing, but he's also doing work he doesn't want to do, and he needs to find a way to escape back into Russia so he can continue doing what he actually wants to do with his life, which isn't working 10 years for this corporation. So I think that this book was a very intriguing setup. Now, I say setup, and setup is mostly what this book is, but this is what I find to be very common when I read volume one of a manga series. Volume one for a manga series is, at least I tend to notice a lot of exposition. There's a lot of setup for what could happen later in the series. So I do find that most volume ones of manga series are like a solid three star. It's just, it's a good, interesting story, but we're just getting the scene started introducing the characters, we don't have a lot of space to do it, and usually a good manga series takes a couple of volumes to get rolling. It's very rare for me to find a breakout for four and a half, five star manga volume, or volume one of a manga series, because volume one is so much set up. And I think that's the story here. I think that volume one has a lot of setup, but you can see the potential. And when I read volume one's, uh, volume one of a manga series, I'm looking for potential that this could be developed into something else. And that's what I see here. Or I also, I look for potential, but I'm also looking for a red flag to make sure I do, I'm not reading something that would be a little, a little too weird for me. Everyone has their own personal tastes. So volume one, I was intrigued and I think that it is intriguing enough for me to continue. The one thing that really stands out for me in this whole series or this whole volume one, and I think is going to continue and gives it the most potential is the amount of detail the author pays to the world around, um, the universe, like the, the, the in book universe is what I'm trying to say. Instead of just saying like, look at this fantastical thing that is nothing like humans. It's a sentient creature. He takes a lot of time to explain what this is, how it works and why. Now I wouldn't describe it as, I'm not, I'm not, I'm going to use an incorrect term here, like hard or uh, what do you call it? Like strong magic, hard magic. It's not sci-fi fant fantasy in the sense that like every chemical reaction as explained it's not that level of detail but the author has spent a lot of time giving a lot of detail about everyone that you encounter and there's these whole sections in the back which really explain how things work there's uh 
whole planets that are explained, residences that are laid out to explain how things are, um, different customs, and the author has put a lot of detail into creating this universe. And I think that is what's going to be the biggest bonus or the biggest positive for this series is the universe and the universe building that the author is doing. Now, I think there is a push-pull element going on here because we, we as the readers, I think ultimately want Marco to return to Russia and have his reunion with his lover and travel the world, but we're also inherently wanting him to not escape quite yet because we want to see this fantastical world that the author has introduced to us. So we have two elements that are imposing each other, which I think can set it up for a very good story, in which even us as the readers aren't really sure what action we want to be cheering for at this time. Of course, Marco tries many times to escape or is thinking about escape frequently in this book but he isn't quite able to accomplish it, accomplish it in this book and I think that's good because we don't want to see him accomplish his escape right away. Imagine that manga series a man goes into alternate dimension or I don't know if alternate dimension, dimension is the right word goes into this fantastical end of the universe management style and then he finds a way to escape and then he lives the rest of his life on earth. I think there is like a, a piece missing so I'm excited to see where this series goes and I think the world building is going to be the strongest element. It did remind me a little bit not entirely but a little bit of the management style of the supreme beings I think is the title by Tom Holt a book that I reviewed on this channel as well so I think there is some a little bit of similar ideas being used there, but those are of course two totally separate pieces of work in their own right. So not entirely the same, but similar enough to at least draw a comparison in my mind. Overall, it's good enough to intrigue me and I'm going to continue to read this series. I actually have volumes two through four on hold at the library right now. I need to actually drive after I finish filming book reviews for today to go get them so I can continue to read because I am so excited to see where this series goes. If you have read the correspondence or just correspondence from the end of the universe, please let me know what you thought about it. Please put your thoughts and comments down below. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great rest of your day.